Welcome back, and uh, I want to say that I am a King James Bible believer, so the verses we're going to go off of is the King James Bible, and like I said, I am a believer in God's perfect written word. I don't ignore scripture because I don't like what it says. Victoria's always sitting next to me because if she's running around, which she will, it'll make a lot of noise, because if you've seen a lot of my videos why Victoria's next to me, it's so that... Uh, she doesn't make a lot of noise, and she'll scratch on the door and make all kinds of noise, too. But, let's get down to the amazing part. Did the thief on the cross have a changed life? And I apologize for the wind. It's just barely windy. I'm hoping it doesn't affect the volume. Right. If you will, Hebrews 9 to 15. The biggest thing about this is a lot of the faith alone people will come to you and say, where's the changed life for the thief on the cross? And it's desperation. To justify sin. The thief on the cross, what time period was that? Hebrews 9 15 through 16. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions they were under the first testament. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. I kind of forgot to write that down, so I'm kind of to paraphrase that last one. So the thief, when he was saved, that was on the cross, was that Old Testament or New Testament? Old Testament. So why would they go to this? Because they're really desperate to feed their flesh. But this is what God showed me, and I must have read it a million times, and it just hit me, and I'm like, Lord, you're amazing. The Lord gets all the glory for this. If you want to turn to Matthew 27, 41. And we're going to read 41 to 44 to get in context before the thief gets saved. Chapter 41. Likewise also the chief priests mocked him. Jesus is on the cross and the priests are mocking him. With the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. We're going to stop there for a second. They're mocking God, and I believe mocking God is a sin. There's probably a lot of verses, because one of the verses says, God is, be not uh, deceived, God is not mocked. Okay. Here's the part that God opened my eyes and I was just, I was like, oh my gosh, really? I've read this a million times. Verse 44, the thieves, plural, also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Let that sink in for a second. You're telling me that both thieves were mocking Jesus Christ from the at the beginning. Remember, they spent all day on the cross. So at the beginning, the thief that got saved was mocking Jesus Christ along with the other thief, along with the chief priests, scribes, and elders. Everybody was mocking Jesus Christ. I mean, not Mary and the, and the disciple that was there, but both thieves were mocking Jesus Christ. I had to let that think it, sink in for a minute. We're always believing that one thief mocked him and the other one didn't. But according to scripture, it says thieves, plural, with an S on it. They both were mocking Jesus Christ. People say cast the same in his teeth. Well, he's in pain, so it could be talking about Jesus' teeth, or it can be talking about the teeth of the two thieves. They're hanging from the cross, so... They're critting their teeth at the same time as they're mocking Jesus Christ. So, now that we've got the scene of what's going on, the character, the heart of everybody, the thieves are mocking, so their heart is against Jesus, and they're mocking him. Now we turn to Luke 23, 39. This is what they like to turn to. And one of the malefactors which were hanging, that were hanged, railed on him, saying, one of the thieves, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. 
Now, but the other answered, rebuking him, saying, Dost thou not fear God? Capital G, God, the Father. Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. For we indeed justly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. Wait a second. You're telling me that the heart of the one thief changed? He went from mocking God, and in his heart, he repented of that mocking, and he believed, you'll find out later as we keep going, that he believed that Jesus is God, and that Jesus is innocent and perfect. Okay? So he believed both in his heart, first step, repentance, then he confesses both his repentance and his belief. Let's continue. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds. He just confessed his repentance. But this man hath done nothing amiss. Now a lot of people say, well that doesn't mean he's saying God is God. Let's get to the next verse. To me, that, and I'll explain why, is him confessing that Jesus is God. The next verse, calling upon the name of the Lord to save you. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Lord, capital L, not lowercase l, Lord, capital L, Lord. Okay. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, But to us there is but one God, capital G, God, the Father, of whom are all things, saying he created all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all are all things, and we by him. Okay, this is saying that there's only one God, the Father, and one Lord Jesus Christ, but they're the same. They both didn't create everything unless they're one and the same. I make a painting, my brother can't come along and say, I, I made the painting. No, I made the painting. We both couldn't make the painting unless we were one, as we were painting. Okay. So you see here, when the thief on the cross calls him Lord, capital L, he's confessing that Jesus Christ is God. Okay. And how do we know that? Matthew 11:25. at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven. Do you know, Lord, I believe Lord always a reference to Jesus Christ, but there are times where people say, well, look right here, it's Lord is a reference to the Father. That's because Jesus Christ is the Father. But regardless, Lord is a reference here to God. So he's calling Jesus God because there's a capital L, Lord, in Scripture. That is plain scripture. So, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. So he calls upon the name of God, he calls to, to God, to Jesus, to save him. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be in my, meet with me in paradise. Now, did Jesus say, Oh, I can't do it now. You asked for it, I can't save you. Because if I do, it wouldn't be a gift. You asked, I can't give it to you. No, he still saved it, that, that thief. That thief is in heaven right now. Okay. So, the big thing about the changed life, you saw that the thief mocked God at the beginning. Mocked Jesus Christ, who is God. Then, his heart changed. Why? Because he repented in his heart, and he believed that Jesus Christ is Lord, and he was innocent and perfect. Then he confessed both to the Lord. He had conviction, he repented, he confessed both to the Lord, and then he asked the Lord to save him. Remember, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. In other words, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. People say, where's the changed life? Okay, show me after, the, after that, show me that thief on the cross still mocking Jesus Christ. Show me where he just, okay, I'm saved, I'm, I'm going to go to heaven, but now I'm going to return to mocking God. You Can't you save yourself? I mean, you say you're son of God. Why didn't he go back to mocking God? Because there was a change in his life. When you get saved, I believe that one of the first things that's really going to get cleaned up in your life is you're no longer going to use the Lord's name in vain, and you're not going to mock God anymore. 
part of your changed life after salvation. So we know that the thief admitted that Jesus is God, perfect. Jesus calls the Father Lord, and yet there is only one Lord Jesus Christ. Only one God, capital G, the Father. So Jesus is God, and that's what the thief is calling him. They are one and the same, because remember one of the mocking was that thou art the Son of God? Uh -huh. So the thief is saying he believes that Jesus is God, capital L, Lord. So, so to sum it up, the thief on the cross started mocking Jesus. He's lost on his way to hell. He's Because of his sins, he's being singular, his sins only. He's being crucified on the cross. Okay, He's lost. But there's a change of heart. Then he repents, believes in his heart, then confesses it with his voice and asks Jesus to save him. Afterward, he no longer mocks Jesus, which is a sin. Changed life. Now, I know a lot of the easy believism are probably going to come on here and just blow this out of proportion and try to make it what it try to change what it is. There was a changed life right there. Now, I'm not using this to try to justify the changed life as far as true biblical salvation where God saves you and afterwards fruits meet for repentance. If you truly repented after salvation because you believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross, you're not going to want to add sin to the cross. I mean, when you do fall into sin and temptation, you want to take it to the cross, repent, forsake, and move on, but you're not going to intentionally want to sin or justify sin anymore. You're going to want a changed life. You're going to submit yourself to God. Okay. This, I only threw this out there because of what God showed me. And I'm like, next time someone tries to bring up the thief and the cross, first thing you tell them is that's Old Testament. Second thing you tell them is you can now show every step of salvation like we have today. He didn't believe, I'm sorry, he didn't believe uh, the gospel because the gospel, like I said, this is Old Testament. But he still believed. He believed what? That Jesus is God. That he's the Son of God. That he is capital L Lord. So he believed something. He repented. He believed something, both in his heart. He had a change. He confessed both. Asked the Lord to save him. Remember me in, while I'm in that kingdom. When you're in their, your kingdom, I'm paraphrasing because I put it, you know, put it away. He asked God to save him, and God did. So another thing you can throw this back in the easy believism face is, like I said, I had a woman that I used to pray with and talk to about the Bible, and she turned her back on God's written word. She now no longer thinks prayer is part of salvation. Okay. He, she thinks that if you pray, or yeah, if you ask God to save you, it's no longer a gift. Well, right there, the thief on the cross asked God to Jesus to save him. Did Jesus say, no, I'm sorry, I can't save you now, because you asked for it, and it won't be a gift if I save you. No, Jesus saved that thief. That is total desperation, and I'm trying not to be mean or nothing, but people try to make up their own definition for words. That's why part of my God's ministry through me to pressure brothers and sisters in Christ out there is to look up the Webster's 1828 definition and try to find the definition because most times a word will be defined the first time it's used. Find the definition that the Bible shows in the 18, Webster's 1828 dictionary the definitions were made from the Bible. Okay, They took the Bible's definitions and put them in a dictionary, Webster's 1828. They try to make their own definition for gift. They try to make their own definition for person. They're always trying to be the final authority. So next time someone tries to throw the thief on the cross in your face who believed the true biblical salvation of repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and call upon the name of the Lord to save you, throw it in their face that it's the Old Testament. So why are you trying to use that for today? Jesus hadn't died on the cross and rose again the third day. The gospel... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4. Chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. He didn't believe it. All he believed was that Jesus was God. So you throw that in their face. And their, their biggest thing is, he didn't have a changed life, so how can you tell if he was saved? 
he did have a changed life. I just showed it. He started out mocking, and then after he got saved by Jesus, he no longer mocked Jesus. A change. He didn't go back to his sin of mocking Jesus. A changed life. Throw both of that in their face, but I'm telling you right now, we're in the last days. I'm talking about we're getting closer and closer. If we're still here by the end of this year, it'll be because God has such grace that there's still somebody that needs to get saved. And that's our main goal is to preach the gospel. These last three videos I've done haven't been really aimed at the lost. If the lost person comes up that rejects Jesus Christ and watches those three last three videos I've done and says, I believe and gets saved, praise the Lord. Praise God. God. To God be all the glory. But more than anything, they're directed at the people who have, to, who have fallen away who once stood for absolute truth and they've fallen away, that they've come back to their first love, they come back to absolute truth, they come back to the real body of Christ, true fellowship with the real Bible-believing Christians. Okay. But I was just so excited and so thrilled that you'll be doing one study and the next thing you know you come across something amazing like that. I never knew, when people always tell the story about the thief on the cross, only one of them mocked Jesus, the other one did not. And I just, I thought that was pretty amazing that, no, according to the King James Bible, they both mocked Jesus Christ. They both started out mocking Jesus Christ. One had a change of heart. Repented in their heart and believed that Jesus was God. Because why else, he confessed both, but why else would you ask him to save you? If you don't believe he's God, that can take you to heaven, that has the power to say whether you can be in heaven or not, why would you ask him to? Remember me when they come into thy kingdom. So, I wanted to make a quick video. Thank you for watching. Uh, keep me in your prayers. Uh, the last couple days, I've had some uh, deja vu. It's something I have prior to having a seizure. The medicine keeps me from having a seizure, but I haven't had a sense of deja vu in, gosh, three years. And then I had it two days in a row, and it was very, very scary. I could really, really, really use your prayers, brothers and sisters in Christ. Please, please, please keep me in your prayers. I had a sister in Christ that was, um, I think she said vertigo. Uh, something that happened to her that also was very vexing and scary. And please keep her in your prayer. Um, keep the body of Christ in your prayer period when it comes to their physical health, their spiritual health, and to help keep standing for the Word of God. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.